We are in the topic of algebra at the moment, and so we're going to be learning something, um, a particular law, a particular shortcut to do with working with algebra. But as you recall, everything in algebra, like S's and P's and Q's, they just stand for numbers, right? That's why we call them pronumerals. Remember that? So everything that we know about numbers applies to algebra. So I'm going to start by considering something really simple to do with numbers, but then we're going to see how it applies to algebra. Okay? So if I asked you to write down what is 4 times, I'm going to give you, let's go with 57. Okay, now, with some time, even without a calculator, I reckon you could pretty quickly give me the answer, but that's actually not what I'm interested in. I want to think about what it means. Okay, Merrick? So 50 times 4 first. Okay, yes, so what, what Merrick is doing is he's breaking this 57 into two pieces, right? So what he's really doing is saying there's a 50 here, that's what the 5 stands for, and then. Okay, so, oh, sorry. That 57 is really shorthand for 57 isn't it, right? 50 plus 7. So I can say that's, what were you saying, Mary? 4 times 50 and? And plus um, 7 times 4. Yep, I'm going to write that in the order that I had it before. Cool. Now just pause there. At this point, I think we could probably all do this even without a calculator, right? Say it all with me. 4 times 50 is? 200. And then the 4 times 7 is? 28. Very good. So you're like, okay, great, I have an answer now, even if I'm not really handy with my 57 times tables, okay? Thumbs up. Now, what we've done here, this strategy of breaking apart 57 into 50 plus 7, right? We didn't need to do it with numbers. We could have just reached for our calculator. But other times when we're dealing with algebra, we kind of do need to think of it as two separate things. So now I want you to, um, further to considering this, let's consider, if I don't have 4 times 57, but if I have four, some, four times something like a plus 7. Okay, now for this guy here, it's okay, Merrick, I know you know the answer, that's all right, I need everyone to have a think about it. Okay, oh, do you want to ask something? Why do you need a multiplication when you already have a bracket like this? Side? Why did I write this multiplication here yeah, when I've got a bracket? bracket? Yeah, sure, that's a good question. I don't have to write that multiplication sign, but I'm writing it now to remind you all that that's what I'm doing, that okay. this is shorthand for this. Does that make sense? Yep. And I'm trying to draw the parallel with what we just did up here. Right. All right. Now, just like before, right? I could say, all right, I've got four of these and four of those. But I just want to make sure you understand why this is. When you say four times, four times itself is an abbreviation. It means this thing written four times, right? I know it's going to be a bit laborious, but it's important, just like with index notation, that you see why this is, right? I'm going to write it. I'd love you to write with me. A plus 7, we're writing it not once, not twice, not three times, but four times. That's why it's four times this. Whoops. Okay. So when you have a look at this, right? Number one, you're thinking, wow, that was a lot to write. This is why we try and avoid writing it out in long form like this. But more importantly, and if you've got another color there, that might be helpful. More importantly, you can see there's a whole bunch of terms you can put together, right? We call this collecting like terms, if you remember this, right? How many A terms do you see? Four. There are four of them, right? If you have another color there, I'd love you to highlight them with me. One, two, three, four. Every time we wrote A plus seven, there was an extra A, right? So I'm going to get four lots of A. And then when we have a look at the sevens, just like earlier, well, you've got four of those as well, right? So therefore, I can say, I'll use a different color here. Here are my sevens, one, two, three, four. So when you add those together, that's what gives you this 28, yeah, which we saw earlier. Now, unlike in our numeric example, because A could be anything, I can't put these together because I don't know what A is at the moment. So I could just stop there. This is it. This is what we call expanding an expression. It's sort of longer and it's taking up more space than this, where I just have those two terms balled together. Okay? Now it starts to get a bit trickier when you think about minus signs, when you think about other numbers and things that are more complicated. For example, here's a third one I'd love you to have a go with me. Okay? Let's do this. Ah, sorry. Krishan, can you say that question again, but just a bit louder so everyone can hear? Four 
Okay, so here's the suggestion, right? Now, I hope you can see where Krishan's thinking. He's got the 28 coming from the 4 and the 7. 4 times 7 is 28, right? But why aren't we doing, actually, 4 times 7? What do you think, Jessica? Yeah. Because they don't like the term. They're not, well, hold on a second. What are the light terms here? They're completely unlike. That's why I've drawn them in different colors, right? Uh, but I did 4 times 7. Like, they combined. I did 4 times A. They're not alike. They went together and I got these. Why can't I just multiply all the way through? Anyway, what are you thinking? Because A plus 7 is in brackets, and actually that's kind of the, see this guy here? That's kind of the key, right? See how we're doing A plus 7? If it was A times 7, then I can multiply all three together, and we, we would get this, right? But in fact, I'm not. Does that make sense? Which is why it was important that we actually show what it is that we're writing. Um, if it was A times 7, it'd be 7A, 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 and that would be 28A. Make sense? Okay, good. Sorry. I was mid-writing of a question. Let's have this a go. I wanted a four. There we go. Okay. Now, this one looks a little bit more confusing. There's more stuff flying around here. Okay, Merrick, do you have a question? No. Or a thought? Okay, you're going to have to wait, my friend, Okay, because everyone else is not where you are just yet, which is fine. You go ahead and jot down the question and see if we confirm what you're thinking in a minute. Now. Here there's some extra stuff. Firstly, there's a number hanging around the front. We'll leave that to one side for a minute. And then you've got this guy in here, and there's an expansion that I can do. That's what we're interested in, right? Now, I could write this out in long form, couldn't I? I could do this. I, I could, but I'd really rather not, right? So, so Hindu, what are you thinking that we could do? You could minus the 10. Okay, so I could try going 10 minus 3, and that would give me 7, right? That would be simpler, however, I want you to think back to this guy. Do you remember this? Do you remember doing it last year? Our order of operations? So what should I do before I get to that? Merrick, what are you thinking? Take these trees two times the a bracket inside a bracket. Yeah, so you see here, unlike here, I didn't write this multiplication in here, but it's still hiding there, yeah? So multiplication actually happens before we're gonna do that subtraction. Is that okay? So I'm gonna take Merrick's suggestion. So Negative three times all of that. Okay, hold on a second. The 10's out the front. I haven't touched it yet. Nothing's happened to it. There's a minus 3 times 4. Minus 3 times 4. What does that give you? Minus 12. Just watch out. As it is said, right, there's a minus that hangs around here, and that's kind of really important. If I made that a plus, for example, I'd get a whole different answer, wouldn't I? Yeah? Okay, now there's a minus 3. It's going to multiply by this guy as well, right? Minus 3 times 2b. Minus 6b. Thank you very much, Ms. Vishaka. Now, can you see what she just did, right? Just like before, and I'm going to, maybe if you've got some other colors here, you might be able to do this with me. See how I did 4 times a, and then I did 4 times 7. Did you see that? So here I'm doing exactly the same thing, one at a time. Here, there's a minus 12. Where'd the minus come from? It's just right there, yeah? And then the minus is still there when you have a go at the next one, which is why that minus sign has come on both of those. Does that make sense? If you are like, I am not convinced, okay? What I'd love you to do is write it out in longhand. You could do, I can do it right now. Um, minus three of them. Here's one, and then here's another one, and then here's the third one. If you expand out all of these, you'll get the same thing. It just takes a lot longer to write. Okay. Have a look. Am I done? Are you happy with that? No. I think we can go a little bit further, right? Sandy, what would you like me to do next? Minus yeah, these guys, what do we call them again when they're very similar? We call them like terms. So the 10 and the minus 12, we can collect them together. What do I get? Minus 2. Negative 2, okay. And what about this minus 6b? What can I do with that? Nothing. There's not much. That's, it's, it's done. It's not a like, so I'm just going to leave it where it is, and be careful to write my B so it doesn't look like a six as well. I'm doing really badly with that. I'm doing Bs and Ss and terrible choices. Sorry guys. Okay, one last one. Can we have a go at this? So this is example number four, okay? <clears throat> okay. Now, these problems are getting progressively longer. 
but they're not getting more complicated. They're just getting like the same amount of complicated and we're just doing it longer, okay? Now, let's just think about this for a second. I could expand both of these just like I have before, okay? Can you help me work out what I would get if I expanded this first expression here? Hmm, what are you saying, Jessica? 4m plus 20. 4m? Do you see where she got that 4m from? Where did she get the 20 from? 4 times 5. 4 times 5, very good. So I could write 4m plus 20. That's the first one. What about the second one? 2m plus 10. Fantastic. And then just like before, I've got some, um, I've got some like terms, yeah? I'm going to highlight them again with some colors. So I've got some m's here. And then I've got some constants, right? These guys? 6m plus 30. So that's great. Are you happy with that answer? You happy with that? You agree? Okay, now I'm just going to point out one last thing before we go because I keep telling you how lazy mathematicians are, right? Um, this is correct. Thumbs up. We got there. But there's an even lazier way to go about this. Put your pens down for a minute. Maybe you see it, okay? I'm going to ask you in a second, Hyang Lung. Um, before I get to what Hyang Lung's suggestion is, you said there was a 4m here and a 2m here. And you were like, ooh, those are like terms. So I'll put them together and I get 6m. And thumbs up, we got there, right? We like like terms because you can put them together, you can collapse them. It's much simpler to write. But did you notice on the very first line of this question, there are already some like terms. Did you spot them? Yeah. Hyang Lung, what are the like terms? Do you know what they are? Four plus five is the like term. That's that's the same term. It's just it's long, but it's the same term and it comes up twice, right? You've got four of them here, and then you've got two of them there. So if you've got four of some things and two of some things, you'll get six of them, right? So I could have done this like so, which gives me the same answer with even less work. Okay? Vishaka. Oh, would it be 6m squared? Well, to answer that question, I'll ask you guys, did I get 6m squared here? No. And the answer is I didn't, because I'm like, I've got, um, each, if each of my fingers was an m, I've got four of them here, and I've got two here, and it'd be really weird if I got fingers squared. That would, that would just look funny, right? So because I've got four of them here, two of them there, I just get six of them in total. Thank goodness for my fingers, okay? All right, so you can see here, when we're expanding expressions, the important things are, number one, wherever you can, you collect your like terms together. We don't need to write out in this long way. We can just take one term at a time. And secondly, look for things that can make things a bit easier for you, if possible, because um, the less work there is, the less chance there is for you to make an error. Does that make sense?